Fred Humphreys is the Vice President for U.S. Government Affairs at Microsoft. His work amplifies Microsoft's voice on key advocacy issues internationally and externally on all aspects of federal and state government affairs. Fred sets a strategy and oversees government affairs outreach on a broad range of topics including cloud computing, taxes, privacy, trade, cybersecurity, immigration, education, and emerging technologies, a small portfolio. Uh, previously, Fred held a position as a senior policy advisor at the House Democratic Leadership Richard Gephardt's office, and he was chief of staff to Congressman Sanford Bishop. So, Fred, we look forward to seeing you, and um, well, maybe later we'll get a play with the surface. Well, so. Good morning. How's everyone? All right. I know we had a little bit of a busy weekend this weekend, but uh, it's great to be here. And what I want to talk about, or really have a conversation about, is as I think of the state of the net, I think it's a really, really important issue today. And it's the area of STEM and high skilled immigration relief. And I'd like to start off by just talking a little bit about my own little childhood. Uh, when I think about my life, I've been kind of quite fortunate. My father came from a town called Apalachicola, Florida, oyster capital of the world. It's up there in North Florida. In his high school class, it was a class of six uh, uh, kids. He, my grandmother was a domestic. My grandfather died when he was nine. My father's oldest brother went off to the service and sent money home for his sister and, and my father to go to college. At that time, the college to go to was Florida A&M University. When he went to college, he was told, you need to major in chemistry. So a professor told him that, and he went and got a degree in chemistry. Then the professor said, you're, you, you know what, you're, you're a pretty good student. You need to go on and pursue and get a PhD. And uh, being from Apalachicola, Florida, not necessarily being exposed to a whole lot, he went on to get a PhD at the University of Pittsburgh. He did two years in the service and applied to three schools, Harvard, Berkeley, and Pitt. The professor had recommended that he go uh, apply to the University of Pittsburgh. Being, quite frankly, disadvantaged, not having any resources, he was getting ready to renew back into the service and he was accepted into Pitt, and he was accepted into the other two schools. He took the scholarship at the University of Pittsburgh. He got his PhD in physical chemistry, the first African American to get a PhD from the University of Pittsburgh in physical chemistry. He went on to uh, pursue education and became a university president. He was a university president of two different universities for 27 years. And for every Christmas, almost every Christmas, I don't want to exaggerate here, you know what was under that tree? a chemistry set. <laughs> every single Christmas I knew, and I tried to burn down the house every holiday. And he would talk to me and talk about at our dinner table, science, technology, and engineering and math. He said, son, that's where it's happening. That's the future. There's nothing more powerful than knowledge Knowledge is, a, is, is just a key to success and key to life. And science, technology, and engineering, and math, as you look at the future and at the same time, you had the space race and you had Eisenhower, you know, focusing on just what we need to be doing and coalescing around different things. And he also believed, which is a challenge that we still have today, we need to make sure minorities pursue STEM areas. And so, it's kind of interesting as we fast forward for me to be working at Microsoft. And of course, I played with the chemistry set. My sister played with the chemistry set. My brother played with the chemistry set. None of us pursued the sciences. However, being able, I went to law school, um, um, but being able to, to, to be exposed to that. And as I think about it, what we need to do and where we are and the jobs of the future, and just to be competitive, right? It's the same thing that I heard from, a, as, a, as a young child, the, the, the importance of STEM and the importance of, you know, when you look at the skills are needed. 
by 2016, 77% of the jobs will require you to have some type of proficiency when it comes to uh, the, the, the STEM areas. When you look at presently the landscape, which we need to take real seriously, presently when it comes to the STEM areas, particularly computer science, it's a 3.8% unemployment rate, all right? We're at close to, close to 8%, 7.8, 7.9. When you look at uh, uh, the jobs that are just open, right now, 122,000 jobs for those with a CS degree open. But we only produce 40,000 degrees. And a good number of those degrees go to foreign nationals. And Microsoft, we have presently, right here in the US, 6,300 jobs open. About 3,400 of those require you know, the engineering or CS uh, type of degree. There is no question there's you know, opportunity of, of for us. But then as we also look at the state of play and we look at the landscape globally, only 4% of the degrees are, uh, are, are, are provided in the, in the STEM areas. And then when you look at uh, uh, you know, Asia, uh, it's like 17%. And then China, it's 31%. And when I think about the state of play for the internet, it's all about innovation, but you have to possess the skills to go be innovative. You have to have those core competencies. Now, it's just not about the STEM degree. Let's also be honest. It's about creativity and, 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 and wanting to have an appetite for, for risk and a lot of different other factors when it comes to that. And in this country, we have a lot of just great companies that are doing really neat things. We lead the world when it comes to innovation and technology. But I'm here to tell you, there's other places in this, in this world that are nipping at our heels. And if we're gonna to continue to be leaders and be leaders when it comes to creation of jobs and innovation and technology, we gotta get serious about getting high-skilled immigration uh, reform. So here's what we're advocating and, and hopefully getting others to, to advocate. When we look at uh, this talent need. We're looking at marrying high-skilled immigration with education. Link it together. We need some H-1B uh, relief. We need some green card relief. We need some other aspects where we need relief. But we also want to tie it to the education component. Because the short-term relief, to be candid with you, at Microsoft, that would be good. And I think it's the same where this is one where the industry, I think we're all in agreement. And I don't care if you're a large or a small, we all have the same challenges when it comes to getting the necessary talent and having the people having the necessary skills to fill the jobs. But I also think that companies have a, another responsibility. They have a responsibility to make the investment here in the U.S. And that investment's in the education side and that investment is in STEM. And that what we'd love to see is some type of education STEM fund right, that would be a part of a high-skilled uh, bill where that money is distributed to the states, but it's for STEM. If it's for teacher development, right, doing some things in the classroom. Because one of the things that's a, that's a challenge, there's 42,000 schools, only 2,100 schools have teachers that are certified to teach AP computer science. You know, you just don't usually just show up, oh, I wanna go into the sciences or, you know, go into computer science and engineering. You gotta be exposed. It, you know, being exposed is important. And, and we think as we look at this and you put together, which is I think a winning combination, I would advocate and suggest to you all, winning combination of getting that high skill relief, investment in the future, in our young folks, and then last but not least, we gotta do something that's just real important. I get the opportunity to, to meet with uh, kids all the time. They come over to our Microsoft Innovation and Policy Center. We display technology. This past weekend, uh, uh, trade associations that we're a part of, uh, we had uh, a technology brunch to talk about the youth and innovation. And we had uh, each trade association got to select someone to do a technology booth. And we had the winners. They were from Princeton, New Jersey, the National STEM Video Challenge. And it was these three young ladies who were 14 who developed uh, this inequality game. It was just awesome. And so we had, we really focused on a small group of people to come to this brunch. It was members. And so we would bring the members and, and we, I'd, I'd take each member from technology booth to technology booth. 
and just to see the members, just like, wow, and what they were doing. That was exciting. And it was just exciting for those kids. But you know what we got to do? We got to make tech. We got to make the STEM and, and I, because sometimes you have to do that marketing thing. We got to make it cool. You know, as I like to say to those three young ladies, you know, it's cool maybe being an Ursula Burns, uh, CEO of Xerox. It's cool to be G Gina Rometty, who's the CEO of IBM. They both got degrees in engineering and science. And when I talk to uh, kids in Ward 5 uh, here, you know, yeah, you might want to be LeBron and be a baller, but I'm telling you what, how about be Mark Zuckerberg? How about be Bill Gates? How about be someone who's the next start, does the next startup uh, uh, aspect? That's, that's an aspect. And you know what? It's a heck of a future uh, if you go pursue this. Uh, it requires some hard work. You've got to be passionate about it. So uh, as I wrap up, I would just say to you, uh, you know, last year for the State of the Net, it's a really f interesting, phenomenal thing happened. And there was a lot of people who did something on the whole Sopa Pippa. Man, I, I, I go up to the hill. Does this have to do something with Sopa Pippa? Because I want to be on the right side uh, you know, of that. We need to have that same thing on. You need to be on the right side of STEM, p passing high-skilled immigration. And also something else, because this is a nation of immigrants. Need to do something on comprehensive, and high skill needs to be a part of that comprehensive. And you'll see us advocating for that. And I really believe if we go out there and meet the needs, we're going to continue to be the leaders of innovation uh, and technology and creating jobs for young folks uh, if we all work together and have that kind of grassroots netizen. Uh, just, it was phenomenal. Uh, what took place on the advocacy. So it's great to be here. Thank you, and uh, have a good rest of the meeting. Thanks. Yes. I could just. Could you state your name? I was uh, like, no. I'm Bob Farron. I'm from U.S. Citizenship and Immigration. Um, let me ask a question about industry's participation with education, mm -hmm. with colleges, with um, advanced placement high schools. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that you know this meeting is focused on what the Congress should do, mm -hmm. but in reality, it comes back to what are we doing in our communities. What are we doing in our colleges? There's a professor here from one of the schools. Um, great questions. The question I would have asked him to talk about in the gap that we didn't quite get to fill was, until you came, <laughs> was uh, uh, what is the outreach of his university to the internet companies? What is the outreach of his university to science and technology? Um, is it just IP or is it something more? Oh. Uh, first of all, thank you. Great question. Um, you know, one of the things I think is in interesting that's taking place when it comes to the, you know, universities, community colleges, this just the higher education aspect. I, I, I think that, uh, quite frankly, there's not, uh, every company that I know, small, mid-sized, particularly the large uh, companies, um, are doing some type of partnership uh, from a research and development uh, uh, aspect or collaboration. Um, we have a pretty robust program in Microsoft where uh, uh, there was a time, it's now Craig Mundy, but there was a time Bill Gates would go and speak and do things with different universities. We do partnerships um, um, when it comes to uh, Xbox and uh, how do you do some things on that platform dealing with education. So it's from research development, it's to making investments, it's to uh, uh, helping to, uh, uh, like we partner a lot with the University of Washington. Um, and uh, when we were thinking about this whole uh, high skill, talent strategy, workforce needs, one of the things that we did is, is we actually got with some uh, different professors and different academicians um, throughout the, the country, from community colleges, state system, private, and said, hey, 
what are some of the things that you think, because you see it firsthand, that we can do together to partner as, uh, and as we think about public policy and meeting public policy needs uh, uh, as well. So uh, those are just some of the type of things uh, that, that, uh, that we do. And, 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 and frankly, the others do too. I, I just, uh, uh, I almost was looking at the sponsor, you know, as almost all of them are, you know, quite frankly, leaders in their own right on when it comes to the investment because we do know education is key in our university system, quite frankly, it's still the leader of the world of where everyone wants to go, go to school uh, uh, when it comes to uh, 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 STEM. Matt, um, I'm Tim Lorden with the Congressional Internet Caucus Advisory Committee. Um, four years ago, uh, in his inaugural address, uh, President Obama had mentioned um, high tech, I mean, uh, health, yep. health technology, and, and, and my friends in the health technology community were just blown away by the fact that their issue had been mentioned in an inaugural address, yeah. which was pretty significant. Yesterday, uh, President Obama uh, mentioned that if we educate workers here, uh, right. make, perhaps STEM workers. And worry about getting them kicked out. We should keep them here. You know, given yeah. your comments, um, I wanted to know if, see, get your feedback on what you thought of the significance of that, you know, oh. that it makes it into an inaugural address. I, I, I absolutely agree with his comment on that. Um, I think President Obama, as well as one of the things that's good about the technology issue and when it comes to the internet, it's really an issue that I find that it's bipartisan, uh, uh, as well as just in Congress. It's not a D issue, or just an R issue. It's a, it's a purple issue, if I could just say. Um, and that uh, it is kind of crazy to me. I just try to take a com pragmatic common sense approach. We're going to train you. We're going to instill in you that entrepreneurial spirit. We're going to give you the skills and you're going to take it back to China and then you're going to develop the next, you know, X and uh, create the jobs. This is a place, this is a country of immigrants and opportunity. And so that just doesn't make sense. And so I think he's right. There's a job multiplier effect that we find uh, with our jobs that, you know, uh, another five jobs are created. And those, you know, help create jobs for here in the U.S. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's one that doesn't make sense and absolutely think that's a, a great recognition and particularly on the high skill, but just also from just a comprehensive uh, 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 aspect uh, as well. Thank you.